Let's see what I can do in this. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, building each other up in fighting the good fight of faith. In, in First Timothy chapter six, Paul tells us in verse number twelve that the Christian life is a fight, the good fight of faith. And he says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, run to the what also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. When we, when we hear of fight, we think of violent and physical means in, in throwing blows. And when we think of fight, going to war and engage in all armed conflict. But the Christians are engaged in a fight which is a spiritual fight. It's a warfare against potent force, forces, very potent forces we are fighting against. And some of our, our foes, Paul tells us, not Paul, Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, that in First Peter chapter two and verse and verse sorry First Peter two and verse eleven. And when we see here, he says, First Peter chapter two and verse eleven. He says, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly loss which war against the soul. Yeah. Fleshly lust is a force. Mm -hmm. I have <laughs> and and it, it, we have to have a strong will mm -hmm. to win. For sure. Yes. So we ought to have weapons ready to fight this. And this, this brings me back to our desire. It is, it is what we desire. Do we desire to fulfill the flesh? Mm -hmm. Or we des desire to fulfill the spirit? To fulfill God's words? And we know the, what the flesh yearns for. <laughs> the various pleasures. And, and we often want to please self. Rather than please God. Doesn't that make marriage? Yeah, I won't talk too much. But doesn't that make marriage? <laughs> Marriage is right. marriage. So, so, so the flesh is one of our foes. And whose flesh it is, or is not the next person. Our flesh, not about our flesh. We lost our lust. All right. Yeah, we, we, we look at the woman and we, and we desire her flesh. Yeah. Right? And, but our, our own flesh. Paul, Peter also tells us that. One of our foes is the devil, 1 Peter 5 and verse 8. He says, we must be sober, be vigilant. For our adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So, and, and let us understand, the devil did not cause us to do anything. We are tempted, we choose to yield to the flesh. We choose to sin. Um, James says that we are, we are drawn away by our own entities. It is ours. So the devil will put it pretty and nice for us. Mm -hmm. But then we must have the will to withdraw, to say no. Mm -hmm. So we have the devil. We have spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 against principalities and against powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. In, in, in whether the state or whether whatever country and the laws that they put, they put forward, I don't, homosexualism and all of those things and law and freedom to marry the opposite sex. We have those, the church has those to deal with. And we have to stand up against it. Our 
We have to stand up and, and fight. And fight these. Because we see it spreading and it is, it's, it's going to spread. But what, what do we need to do? Give up and say, boy, we, we, we're not going to preach the gospel? No, we need to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. These foes, we have to fight them. Even our own self. You know that we are our worst enemy? Look, look at what Paul says in Romans chapter 7. We are our worst enemy. In Romans chapter 7 and verse 23, Paul says, I see another law in my member, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law, which, law of sin which is in my members. So we are our worst enemies. And we have to fight ourselves. All right? We have to, it, it goes back there. We have to have, decide to do what is good. We have to decide to be strong. All right? And we have to make sure that Christ remains our friend. If we are, if we are worse enemies, so we have to, to make sure. And, and even Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse 11. This is what Peter says. That, oh, we have to abstain from flesh and lost right? Which war against the soul. Alright? So we are our worst enemy. And how do we sin? James tells us. <laughs> James tells us how we sin. That in James chapter 1, that we are drawn away by our, our own loss. Oh, not, not the next person's loss, but our own loss. We yield to the temptation. And, and as the song says, we should not yield to temptation, for yielding is sin. Yeah. All right? So we have forces to contend with, to fight against. Right? So in order to win, these forces. And we can win them. We can win the war. Don't it? We can win the war. As fierce as it is, we are able to win. If we do equip ourselves the way that Christ tells us to. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul and verse 11, Paul says that we need to put on. And sometimes it's not Everything that we put on, that's where we're not winning. He says, put on the whole armor of God. So when we are losing, we have let down our guard. Mm -hmm. Something we have not taken up in the way we should. Something that we have not established in our minds, in our hearts, that we should have. Alright? And we are human beings, eh? Mm -hmm. we, 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 we're going to slip up. Alright? We're going to slip up. Because no, nobody can say that when I, since I become a Christian, I have not sinned. Mm -hmm. right? And that is why we need to be praying, forgive me for the sins I don't even know that I did. All right? So we need to understand that how we sin. James, and, well, James chapter 4, oh, well, we could. We don't, we don't bother to go to that. We're talking about how we are going to win. Because we need to know that the devil is tricky. How we are going to fight the wiles of the devil. Alright? The deceitfulness of, of the devil. So we need to arm ourselves. Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2 no, Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Here's what Paul says. He says, let's say that verse, verse 10 says, to whom we for, he forgive any. For I forgive also, for I forgive 
anything to whom I forgive it is for your sake. Mm -hmm. I it in the I in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are what? Not ignorant of his devices. So we ought as Christians should know how the devil operates. Mm -hmm. That he operates in the preacher too. Mm -hmm. Yet it, if the preacher gives him leverage, any one of us, drop down our guard, the devil can use. So we are not immune to the devil's attack. The devil will attack and, and sometimes we, we, we are we left somewhere open. And he uses, he uses even our wives. If our wives, if our wives allow the devil for, 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 for use her, it will happen. Our close friends. He is so deceptive. Alright? That when anybody allow him to use them, he attacks. And he attacks those who are vulnerable. Alright? So he is elusive. Right? And he has strong power. Don't take it for granted. All right, he has strong power. What Peter says, he's we must be vigilant, for he's like a roaring lion. A lion who is hungry is in his strongest. Mm -hmm. So don't underestimate the power of the devil. That's why we have to come with the full armor of God. The full armor of God to fight the devil. All right, now. How do we win the battle against our foes? It must be done in faith. Lord, I believe that you are able to take me through this one. Lord, you are able to let me overcome. It's, it's God. It's through faith in God. All right? Without faith, the Bible says it's impossible to please Him. Faith overcomes. Isn't that the faith? The song says faith is a victory that overcomes the world. Yes. And that's what John tells us. Alright? So it requires faith. It requires soberness. Peter says be sober. Understand how things are. Have a clear mind as to how things are going. Look around and see what is happening. I know, I know that Satan is working. So it takes soberness and faith. It also takes steadfastness. He says, be steadfast and unmovable. Steadfastness is being there in the word at all times. That's how Jesus was able to come to the devil, don't he? The scripture said. Basically, you have to say that to Satan, you know. Christ says not to do this. So it takes steadfastness in the word, all right? And it takes strength. And, the, and strength comes from faith. In believing God that I am able to do it. All right? So it takes strength. Because in, in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, notice what Paul says in verse 16. It says, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with what? Might by his spirit in the inner man. So it's not the physical, but the inner man is going to stand up. And that, that inner man is going to fight. Because there's, there's that spirit in you, that desire to do bad. Right? But it, it, it takes strength to fight, to stand up and fight. And of course, we have to put on the old arm. As Ephesians chapter 6 tells us. So victory can be ours. Victory over the devil. Yeah. 
can be ours. All right? And as I said earlier on faith, John says, for faith is the victory. John, 1 John 5 and verse 4. When you look at Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter, sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 4. You look at Paul. And, you know, as Christians, we should be able to say like Paul. We should be able to say like the Apostle Paul. We, Paul at this point in time was, was in Rome. He, was, he had been arrested the second time and taken to Rome and, was, and knew that he was going to die. All right? He knew that he was going to die. And he wrote to Timothy. He says, I have fought a good fight. Now, we don't know how long we are going to live. But we should be able to say at all times that I have fought a good fight. <clears throat> all right? We don't know how, but whatever we have had to do in the day could be our course. We might be dead tomorrow. I have fought a good fight. He says, I have kept the faith because I have fought. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He says in verse um, 8, eight henceforth is laid upon me a crown of righteousness. So like Paul, who had overcome, he had won the fight. And didn't they fight him? But he overcame. Jesus says to his, his, his disciples, that in the world you are going to have persecution. He says, but I have overcome. What, what does it mean? You can overcome. Oh, yeah. So we can overcome. No matter how potent the, force, the forces are. We can overcome. And we have to help each other to make that fight. We have to help each other. That's why I said that earlier on that we need as men to understand that we need help. And when we, we recognize that we need it, don't sit down. Go seek it. Because it is our soul that is going to be lost. So, so victory can be ours if we desire for victory. As Paul. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And then force is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. For him alone. See that it is for others too. Not only Paul going to win. He says, not for me alone, but for them also who love their period. So do we love it? Their period? Do we desire to see Christ? Whatever time that we have, we need to fight the good fight of faith so that we can lay hold on eternal life. And we, we can't win by ourselves. We have, we have a responsibility for ourselves. All right? Paul says we need to, with, with, with fear and trembling. All right? So we need to have our individual. We have to struggle. And, and it's like Paul says that some of our birds will have to bear for our own selves. So some fight we'll have to do it by ourselves. And there are others that we have to have others to help us. And as men, we need to remember that. That we are there for each other. As Christians, we are there for each other. We are in the same army. Fighting for one cause. Fighting towards one goal. And we can't afford, you know, in, 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 in the physical war out there, one, one soldier watched the other's back, don't it? He watches the other's back. And we have to watch one another's back too. In the fight, we have to watch one another's back. And I guess that's why we can say the elders are there to watch over the church.
but individually we have to watch for one another. And that's how we're going to help to build each other up when we help one another in watching for the Lord and, and the signs. And sometimes you will see the, 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 the sign of Satan coming in. And it is near us and we don't know. We don't realize it. Person don't realize it, but somebody else sees it. Sees the danger. And that's where we need to call upon and say, come, you know what? Careful. Careful with what you're doing there. Because yeah. that's trouble. That's true. All right. Questions? find somebody who they can confine them. Somebody in the church, there must be somebody in the church who is a, who is a part of the, the body that you can confine them. You're not going to take your story to everybody. But you must, if you can't confine the preacher, something wrong. Alright? If you don't want the preacher to know what you're doing, find somebody else. <laughs> But that, that's what you have to do. You have to have within you the desire to go to heaven so that people will get up. It's like fire. You, 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 you sit down and some fire start. And you don't want to die. Then you have to get out. You have to see that your soul is in danger. And so you are going to get up. You have, you have, you have to find the energy and the will to get up and go and hit and seek help. You, there's, there cannot be, you can't just shun pride and come off your high horse. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. And realize that you are weak and you need help. You need to get up and, and It 
all boils down to their desire. It all boils down to their desire. It, it is what I, what, what I desire, what I want. Yeah. All boils down to their desire. Because notice this, we see when we are drawn away by our own <coughs> lust. Our own lust and entice. So we don't see the danger. And it's, it's it, well, we are blinded. Simple as that. Our minds have been blinded to the truth. Yes. Because we go because we, we, we are enticed by something else. Well, I think it, and the devil the devil doesn't pull us away overnight. The devil or Satan uses tactics to pull us away slowly, bit by bit by bit. Right? And that's what's dangerous about it because you don't realize yeah. it's happening until it's already happened. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's why I, I said too, sometimes you don't see the danger that you're in. You don't know. Well, you should know. But for some reason, the focus of, of God and what he promised you has left you. And you, you, your, your mind is on something else. I don't know if, you want, if, if the person has said, God has failed me. In some, in some way because you know, some people come to God not to work for God, but for God to work for them. And, and, and when that is not happening, then you see the person going. Because it may be that that person's interest in the first place was not. He has, what, what he came for has not been fulfilled. Because, as I said, people, people join church for various reasons. They want to attach themselves to church for various reasons. Yeah. I think lots of times, what well, I've seen happen in the church is uh, that some people, they come, they're new in the church, they're really enthused, and sometimes they get the feeling, well, you're not bothering with me enough, you don't fool me enough. Well, the road runs both ways. Yeah. You know, you just can't be expecting to everybody reach out either you not on back. You know? Exactly. Yeah. You have a role to play. There are some people that come to the church that are not approachable, they're not sociable. All right? And, and really, they, they want you to come to them and I say, they don't want to reach out. And it's both ways. I think in that case, there's, when you get to the point, they're starting to feel sorry for themselves. Yeah. And, 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 and two, you know, sometimes people are reaching out to them and it's so, they don't even realize, realize that that's what's happening. Yes. I was going to say, I also see the opposite to what Larry said in the trap. We as Christians fall into a trap when we say it's Dave's fault because he's not reaching out to someone. Yeah. He did it himself. Yeah. We're not taking the responsibility that we have as a church to be reaching out to him. Sorry, Dave, I used it. But it goes both, both ways. Both it's ways. easy for us to jump off and say, oh, yeah. so we had nothing. Right. They, they did nothing about it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it does happen that way. Can talk to you about that? My next question is that as we are looking at the old fight, we are looking at men in the church in the family of the fight. What are the five? What are some of the great fights we have on our hands now? As men to fight. So now as, fight. As leaders. Yes. Um, there are so many. I mean, the, the culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, sure. Denominationalism. Mm -hmm. um, homosexualism. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. Just the whole world. Just, yeah. 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 Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. So, so materialism. Yeah. Those are those 
about small grade flights that we have. And don't think it's new. It's, it's not new. The church was faced with it in the first century. It's just a recurrence. Sometimes it, 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 it takes down, and then for a while it comes back, it, it just flares up again. Dress differently, dress differently, yes. <laughs> I mean, the church is under attack. Excuse me. It's not, and even from within. Talk about denominationalism. De it, it, it's even from within, and, and, and we have seen it. Where and, and, and the Bible did the Bible tell? It's not. It's not surprising because the Bible says that even brethren from the faith. So it is what has been said is happening. Nothing new. Okay. We just need to be vigilant in our fight. We can't afford to do. We can't afford to let sin take over. You have to stand up with pauses. Quit you like me. You're going to you're, you will have to make decisions that are going to make people uncomfortable. And if it is for the cause of the truth, then you have to do it. And who don't like it, don't love God. Decisions that you make in the church, who don't like it, don't love God. Right decisions. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.